पूरा रेलवे एजुकेशन जुडिशली सिविल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन सो ब्रिटिश एटलीस्ट मॉडर्नाइज दिस इंडिया सो यू वुड फाइंड देर इज रीजनल इम्बैलेंस इन इंडिया टूडे एंड वन रीजन इज हिस्ट्री वन इज जोग्राफी एंड बोथ आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट to understand a backwardness or development of a particular area why punjab and haryana is developed as compared to manipur and nagaland history and geography are responsible why america and england are developed as compared to somalia and nigeria history and geography both are very much responsible clear hai na जैसे ये समझ में आ जाएगा आपको समझ में आ जाएगा कि एक कंट्री ऐसा क्यों है जैसे गुजरात का कुछ एरिया बहुत अमीर है और सदियों से कोस्टल सबसे बड़ा इसी के पास है सबसे ज्यादा मैरी टाइम एक्टिविटीज इसी के पास और छत्तीसगढ़ हमेशा से बैकवर्ड था यू गॉट माई पॉइंट नॉट क्योंकि सेंट्रल इंडिया है हेंटर हार्डलाइन है डेंस फॉरेस्ट है ट्राइबल है and government of india and government of madhya pradesh hardly did anything substantial after independence and british also exploited them moguls hardly reached them north east why remain backward very far so jitne bhi india mein rulers aaye ancient times se medieval se modern assam se aage jaate hi nahi the i was giving one lecture in tejpur university aur wahan ke kuch student ne pucha sir why this region is backward than other part of india i said you were not lucky enough that you were ever attacked by moguls and british <laughs> you got it or not you know this is blessing in disguise agar mogal attack karte to ek road bana dete kila bana dete kuch shiksha sansthan ban jati aur punjab was blessed that punjab was attacked most in history to punjab bhi bada smart bhi ho gaya uske chakkar mein kyunki jahan zyada hamla hota hai wahan ke log zyada alert smart ho jate hain You got this point or not? और वहां पर ज्यादा डेवलपमेंट भी हुआ क्योंकि ज्यादा कल्चर वहां का टर्किश कल्चर अरब कल्चर ईरानियन कल्चर सेंट्रल एशियन कल्चर लाहौर बिकेम हब ऑफ वेरियस कल्चर दिस इज हाउ हिस्ट्री एंड ज्योग्राफी सो टू इंडिया विच टू डायरेक्ट एंड इंडायरेक्ट आवर फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल वॉज फॉर्ट इन विच पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया ब्रिटिश इंडिया विच पार्ट डेवलप्ड मोस्ट British India developed most. most. Hope you are getting or not. Once we start the Governor General from 1773 till 1940, sorry, 50. All the history of modern India would be under your tips. <coughs> are you getting now? So this is our now our next chapter, history of. गवर्नर जनरल देखो आपको मैंने प्लासी टू प्रार्टिशन में ये चैप्टर दिया होगा हिस्ट्री ऑफ गवर्नर जनरल और उसमें हमारा जो पहला टॉपिक होगा पहला गवर्नर जनरल है 1773 टू 85 वॉरेन हेस्टिंग यू रिमेंबर हिम हु वाज ही फर्स्ट गवर्नर जनरल इन काउंसिल एंड ही केम एज गवर्नर of bengal in 1773 uh, sorry 2 and now he is governor general in council so whatever happen in his period good or bad this is what now we are going to discuss but get to remember history mein you don't have to remember only heroes but also villains but naam hue to kya hua naam na hua aisa kehte hai na now he is like opener match test cricket opener and opener always has to face bounces moving ball uncertainty of the pitch he was like that likhna mat ye sab but hope you are getting now so what he would do that whatever he would try not necessarily he would succeed you got this point so he tried many thing in administration and many thing he failed and because of which historians gave a unique name to his period and his period is called period of trial and error <coughs> now you understand why period of trial and error okay i'm going to ask a question and you have to reply me 
when they took charge of Bengal, Bihar and Odisha. First time direct rule. Can you tell me two immediate problems which the company must have faced or two immediate attention which the company had to give towards which two area? जब कोई हुकूमत बनाता है जैसे आपको फॉरेन हुकूमत बनाने दे दें तो सबसे पहला ध्यान किन चीजों पे जाएगा आपका दैट इज अ सिंपल क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट इज रिलेटेड टू रेवेन्यू कलेक्शन एंड इन दोज डेज लैंड रेवेन्यू वॉज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सोर्स ऑफ इनकम टूडे इट इज नॉट Income tax, indirect taxes, VAT, etc. But in those days it was land revenue. Lagan, which we used to say in some areas, and that was more than 50% source of income for the state in ancient time, medieval time, and British time. So, the first question was land revenue, and in that there were four questions: how much to collect, from whom to collect, when to collect, and how to collect. Can I repeat the question which I give? How much to collect? When to collect? From whom to collect? And how to collect? Let's see. How much to collect? 30 percent, 50 percent, 60 percent. When to collect? January, February, March. Why? Lagan. Ka mausam kaun sa hota hai? Festival to India mein alag alag hota hai. South mein alag, North mein alag, Harvest ka season alag alag hota hai. Kis se collect kare? Directly from peasant or zaminda? And how to collect? Cash में करें, kind में करें, थोड़ा-थोड़ा दोनों लें। You got it or not? Second, how to deliver justice? <coughs> you got my point? How to rule? How to govern? And you know, there are two type of justice. Generally, hope you know that one is civil and one is criminal. मालूम है? Civil is dispute of property, inheritance, etc. Criminal, all the crimes of murder, theft, robbery, dakati, crime against women. Clear? Now the problem with the British East India Company was that it was a private company trained for trade and commerce. Usko kahan se ye sab pata? You got this point or not? They had no knowledge about Indian history. How to collect, when to collect, from whom to collect, and how, from whom to collect. They had no knowledge what kind of justice system Indians had because criminal justice system the Mughals had set up in India, right? And Mughals had taken partly from Islamic country, partly from local, right? Civil justice was different from different communities. You had Hindu laws, you have Muslim laws. Shadi ke rule, talaq ke rule, inheritance ke rule, Hinduon ke apne the, Muslimano ke apne the. Ab British ko na Hinduon ka rule pata na Muslimano ka rule pata. Wo to Christian the. England se aaye the. Aur yahan pe rule itne diverse the. Just giving an example, ke civil law mein. जो हिंदुओं का सिविल लॉ है मैरिज में वो मुसलमानों के मैरिज लॉ से अलग है लाइक अंदर हिंदू सिविल लॉस और हिंदू लॉज जो शास्त्राज में लिखा था नॉट नाउ क्योंकि अभी चेंज हो गया आफ्टर इंडिपेंडेंस होप यू नो दिस सो अंडर हिंदू लॉज मैरिज वॉज सैक्रो सैंक्ट जन्म जन्म का संबंध यू गॉट इट नॉट एंड देर वॉज नो प्रोविजन ऑफ डाइवर्स अमंग हिंदूज Just giving an example, in Muslim there is a word called Tala, in English there is a word called Diverse. If there is any Sanskrit word for this, there is no Sanskrit word, because concept is not, then what do you do? Now in Hindus, once the marriage you enter, it is like Abhimanyu Chakravyu, there is no exit gate. Don't write like that, it is my interpretation. And in Muslim, the simplest way to exit talaq, 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 over. <laughs> you got it or not? Now the British were amused and surprised. Ye do itna extreme laws, how they are living together separately. 
you got this point or not? That one is Muslim law and one is complete Hindu laws. As the most other laws they Avunko kis chis ki zurut padegi. Can you imagine? Now to know this, they had to know history and culture of India. They had to study Shastras and Sharia. They had to study some Mughal document ke how Akbar collected land revenue, Jahangir collected land revenue. This promoted, this prompted the British to study India's past. And this led to a very interesting discovery and that is what you have to understand that to know about India's past, to know about India's law, India's judicial system etc. They started developing a new branch of knowledge which is called Indology. A study of India's past. <coughs> A study of what? India's past. And this itself was part and parcel of overall oriental studies. Orient means? East. 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 So now the Europeans had to learn more about East because now they are ruling over East. So Indology is part of Oriental studies and the person who would do this job would be called Indologist. Clear? Eh? Now there was a problem for them. The problem was that in ancient and medieval time you had two different language used by Indians. In medieval time mostly it was Persian and Arabic, right? And in ancient time it was mostly Sanskrit and Prakrit. Hope you know this. So if you want to know ancient philosophy of Hindus, you have to learn Sanskrit. If you want to know Buddhist philosophy, you have to know Pali, which is a form of Prakrit. You got this point? Another problem was the script Brahmi. So what you have to understand, the Europeans knew about Arabs and Iranians because they had interacted in medieval world. Unse ladai bhi khub hui thi, ek dusre se sikha bhi tha. But they had no connection with Sanskrit. Forget Europeans, even Indians had forgotten. By the turn of 18th century, India mein thodi na log Sanskrit jaante the. ये तो हिंदी बंगला मराठी तमिल तेलुगु जानते थे और चार पंडित चार अक्षर जानता था वो बस जो शादियों में बच्चे पैदा होते वक्त या इस्तेमाल होता उससे आगे तो पंडित भी नहीं जानता था और एंशियन संस्कृत में उस श्लोक का क्या मतलब था दैट पंडित आल्सो वाज क्लूलेस तो पहला प्रॉब्लम था स्क्रिप्ट पढ़ना दूसरा प्रॉब्लम था लैंग्वेज पढ़ना सो मेनी स्कॉलर्स फ्रॉम जर्मनी England and other European countries started coming in 1780s, 90s and afterwards and they started studying ancient script like Ashokan edict was read by James Prince like Bhagavad Gita was translated in English I will tell you all these don't worry Bhagavad Gita translated by Charles Wilkins Abhigyan Shakuntalam was translated by William Jones. Rig Vedas were translated by Max Müller, a German. In Sabne, India ki ek zabardas khidmat ki seva ki, ke in logo ne India ko discover kar liya. Ancient India ke baare mein hum nahi jaante. Hame Hadappa ke baale mein nahi malum tha. It was the British who told about the great ancient civilization, Hadappan. We have not read any Ashokan edict. It was the British who read Ashokan edict and through edict we know the greatness of Ashoka. Through British we know about Buddha. Through British we came to know about the great Ajantas and Aloras. Unhoni discover kiya na? Unki army march karti thi. To wo jungle longal saaf karte thi. To dekhte thi bada sa temple mil gaya, bada sa kila mil gaya, bada sa gufa mil gaya. And these were the acts were done by ancient Indian people. In a stone age, like Bheem Betka, Madhya Pradesh, there are many caves in which there are rock cut paintings. 
एंड दीज आर ऑफ स्टोन एजेस इंडियंस का तो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन है ना लेकिन इंडियंस को नहीं मालूम था ये बताया किसने अंग्रेजों ने तो इंडियंस की हालत कैसी थी अपनी हालत कभी एहसास नहीं था मुझको यू गॉट दिस लाइन अपनी हालत कभी एहसास नहीं था मुझको मैंने औरों से सुना है कि परेशान हूं मैं यू गॉट दिस पॉइंट और नॉट तो दिस इज वेरी यूनिक स्टोरी ऑफ इंडियंस दैट इंडियंस फिर टोल्ड अबाउट इंडिया बाई हु बाई द ब्रिटिश लेकिन उसमें से कुछ लोगों ने बेमानी भी की कि इंडियंस तो कुछ आता वाता था नहीं ये तो बाहर से ही लोग आकर इंडिया को अच्छा करके गए कुछ थे जिन्होंने ईमानदारी से लिखी सो वी हैव ऑल टाइप ऑफ हिस्टोरियंस एंड राइटर्स अब इस बंदे ने क्या किया वॉर हेस्टिंग ने राइट इट डॉट पॉइंट नंबर टू यू नो फर्स्ट पॉइंट आई रोट अबाउट हिम दैट इज पीरियड इज कॉल एज पीरियड ऑफ ट्रायल एंड एरर सेकेंड पॉइंट यू राइट that he gave right to collect land revenue to a zamindar who was highest bidder who was what <clears throat> highest bidder you know bidding for 5 years for 5 years this system was called quinquennial system this system was called queen quinquennial sorry double n hai jo 5 yearly hota usko quinquennial bolte hain that's simple quinquennial system which continued till 1777 1772 to 1777, right? <clears throat> Which continued till 1777. It started in 1772, continued till 1777. What was in this? Whosoever bidded highest, okay, Mukherjee Nagar say, I will pay 1000 rupees and I will collect from the peasant. So you got that bidding right. But there was a problem at the time of bidding. The zamindars quoted very high price. but at the time of actual payment they failed because they themselves collected 900 so how can they pay 1000 rupees so company was facing a problem every year and what was that problem that problem was this one you are getting no fluctuation of income you got it so write it down next point in 1777 in 7 yes please in 1777 this system was replaced by one yearly system by one yearly just ek aadmi ko de dijiye ye piche kar denge ek ek baat ke apne apne hisse mein ek aadmi ko de dijiye aap aage do aage bhi de dijiye aap one yearly system one yearly you got it well this is my own book i have written it and first three chapters of the book you read it and hope you would read it seriously i personally believe if i give you all together you would give it into shelves jaise ek kitab hoti hai jo hum khareed ke laate hain kam padhte hain ek jo padosi se mang ke laate hain zyada padhte hain aisa mere sath bahut zyada ho chuka hai to I don't want that one. Secondly, what I said and repeatedly would say, don't read more than two books of modern India and my class note. Eighty percent cover होगा, hundred percent तो आप दस साल में पढ़ोगे तो भी नहीं होगा. Don't rush for materials here and there. Mukherjee Nagar से ज़्यादा material मुझे नहीं लगता India में कहीं होगा. अगर material ही पढ़ के सब IAS बन जाते, तो फिर आप समझ सकते हो यहाँ पे सारे students के पास material ही material है. असली खेल ये है कि यू हैव टू बी वेरी सिलेक्टिव एंड वन सिलेक्टिव वेरी इंटेंसिव एंड एवरी कॉन्सेप्ट शुड बी वेरी क्लियर जिसका हेड क्लियर है कॉन्सेप्ट का ये एग्जाम उसी का है